Good morning and welcome. Welcome to our summer services, our online services. Hopefully you're enjoying a good summer break. But let's join together this morning in worship. Let's come together. Some words from Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5. Be cheerful, no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you, who belong to Jesus Christ, to live. Amen. Chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. Not peace, but division. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on there will be five in one family, divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, It's going to rain and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Oh, 
things throughout the Bible, both by the prophets in the Old Testament, to the people who met and ate with Jesus during his lifetime on earth, and those who have written about him afterwards. Isaiah, in the Old Testament, prophesied who the coming Messiah would be, words used in many a Christmas carol service. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. Prince of Peace, words we hear linked to Jesus. And yet in our reading today, Jesus speaks quite the opposite. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I have come to divide people against each other. <laughs> well, that caught my attention. I thought Jesus came to save the world, to save humankind, to bring eternal life, peace on earth. So why does he say he's come to divide people against each other? Let's start by looking at what does peace mean. In dictionaries and Bible concordance, peace describes a multitude of states being a state of tranquility or quiet, such as resting in a quiet garden, a pact or agreement to end hostilities, harmony in personal relationships, and we think especially about our relationship with God a state of security or order in a community. We live in a country in peacetime. Freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts. Our mind is at peace. And the ancient Greek word used for peace in the reading, erini, is translated as to join together into a whole. Wholeness, God's gift of wholeness. So why did Jesus tell his listeners he came to divide people against each other? That list sounds positive, loving. Well, I don't think he meant it as his purpose in coming. His purpose was to be the ultimate sacrifice so that our sins could be forgiven and our relationship with God could be made whole again. Each of us who believe receive the Holy Spirit. As we draw closer to God, learn and know more about his nature, his desire to love us and for us to love him, we will begin to know joy and peace that is beyond our earthly imagination. In Philippians we read, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle, for, settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the centre of your life. So yes, individually, we can know a divine peace, but that doesn't mean the world is at peace. I used to work as a nurse and I'd sometimes see patients with nasty wounds on their legs perhaps. And as I set about cleaning the wound and preparing the dressings, I would explain that the wound would actually look worse next time I saw them. And that was because the wound would, the dressing would clean away the dead and dry old tissue down to the moist tissue layers where healing can take place. The wound might smell a bit as the old tissue lifts off and it will all be sticky and sloughy. <laughs> Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Here they are, expecting me to heal their wounds and I tell them it's going to get worse before it begins to get better. And that is what Jesus is saying to the people in our reading. He's telling them that life may get worse before it gets better. And that's still true today. As Christians, our lives may be made more difficult as we journey with Jesus. Ridicule or anger thrown at us. In some places in the world, people put their lives at risk 
just by acknowledging Jesus in their lives. Suddenly we have to make choices to do the right things, things that may be saying no to friends or family. But think about the people in history who have changed lives by standing up for what is right. Take William Wilberforce, a politician who fought to abolish the slave trade. Mother Teresa, who committed her life to helping the poor and sick. And of course, Charles Wesley, who felt drawn to bring the gospel message to ordinary people, preaching in fields because he rocked the boat of the established church. So maybe when Jesus told his listeners he has come to divide people against each other, he was modelling how we should act as Christians in our lives. Not causing division by hatred and greed, but by causing others to hear about a loving God in our words and actions. For now, each of us that come to know about an all-loving, forgiving God who will abide in us through the Holy Spirit, as we are made whole, we can know that peace that people like Isaiah wrote about. Amen. So let's join together in prayer, our prayers of intercession. Sue reflected on Jesus being called many things. Just think of those names now in your mind and turn them into your prayers, into the start of your prayers this morning. She talked about worries. And Father God, we turn our worries to you now. Rather than dwelling on them, we turn them into our prayers. So again, just pause a moment. What are those worries that are just bubbling up most in your mind? And turn them, turn them into prayers so that they don't worry you. Wounds. What wounds do you feel? What wounds do you see other people feeling? What hurts need healing? Let Jesus be that healer. Let him wash away that slough and dead skin and allow the healing to take place so that there can be wholeness. What areas of life need that wholeness? Is it your life? Is it somebody's life that you know? Is it a situation you can think of around the world where wholeness is needed? Just offer up those situations, those people, now. Lord Jesus, help us to stand up, to stand out what is God calling you to rock the boat about? Do you need to offer some prayers of healing to someone? Do you need to challenge a situation? Is God calling you to challenge that situation? Listen and respond. And those names that we thought of at the beginning, Prince of Peace, Mighty Counselor, Master, friend, we offer up these prayers in your mighty name. Amen. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in your suffering world, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile eyes, cures for the hills. Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills. Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak. Voices to. Those 
let's close our worship this morning with the blessing from Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>